Wednesday attempts to summon Goody, an old ancestor and fellow psychic who killed Crackstone. During a surprise birthday party, Wednesday has a vision of Goody, who instructs her to seek out the Gates Mansion. There, she witnesses Mayor Walker as he is leaving the building and sneaks into his car. After arriving back in town, Mayor Walker is run over and severely injured. Principal Weems locks down the school and forbids Wednesday to leave campus. With Tyler and Edith's help, she escapes and returns to the Gates Mansion. There, they discover that Laurel Gates, Garrett's younger sister, long believed to be dead, might still be alive. They find the severed body parts of the monster's victims in a cellar, but are forced to flee after being ambushed by the monster. Wednesday leads Galp into the cellar, only to find it empty. At Nevermore, Wednesday convinces Weems not to expel her in order to pursue further her investigation. At the hospital, an unknown figure kills Mayor Walker. Thanks for stopping by the Search T channel. I am Search T, and that is the synopsis to episode 6 of season 1 of Wednesday. This one is entitled Quid Pro Quo. And what an episode. And something that we see is that Wednesday is getting closer and closer to solving this case. We saw some things in here that uh, kind of opened our eyes. We saw the appearance, the elusive appearance of the beast while they were in the, uh, the old um, Gates Mansion. You know, she is able to coerce or to trick uh, Enid and uh, Tyler to join her under the guise that she wanted to go out with Enid, have a girls party, kind of like a makeup for the, the party that kind of went awry when they tried to surprise Wednesday with a birthday party. And then she pretty much uh, told or accepted Tyler's uh, invitation that he gave to her earlier to go out on a date, go out on dinner. And um, this is all because when she summoned, and this is the opening of the episode, she uh, was able to, uh, she had a vision during her party. In the, in the beginning, she was trying to summon Goody Adams, and she did not answer her. And then she gets some invitation. It kind of looked like it came from Goody Adams. She, was, she went to a, a crypt, and then there they were, her friends, to wish her a happy birthday. And then she gets a vision when she sees this uh, encryption in Latin on a wall. And she meets her ancestor there, Goody, and she tells her to go back to the, you know, the Gates Mansion. I mean, when she goes there, she finds some things in there, and she mainly finds doubt that possibly... Um, Laurel Gates might still be alive. I was thinking, is she the monster? Maybe. She sees the bed, the bedroom. It's not dusty. It's well made. As Edith said, I think someone's been here. You know? But then, when all goes to hell, they find the, you know, the, the separate body parts from different victims of the monster in there in jars. And then the monster, you hear him slash somebody, and you know it was Tyler. And then when they escape, Wednesday and Enid do, they go back for Tyler, and Tyler has been slashed across the chest. Looks like the same thing that happened with Eugene, but Eugene was severely, I mean, it was a bad slash. I mean, you know, he's still in the hospital. As we saw the scene where... Uh, um, where Wednesday was visiting Eugene in the hospital. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, from, the, from behind, we see Xavier. How the heck does Xavier know that they were there? Maybe I missed it. Maybe he heard that they were going there. But it just raises your eyebrows and makes you think that, is he the monster? 
who knows, right? But it's just weird that he popped up. It's very weird that he popped up. And then she brings back, you know, Sheriff Galpin to show him, hey, here, look at the evidence. There's jars of body parts. The beast was in here. And when they go in there, it's all cleared out. There's even a, a vehicle that was someone used to run down uh, Mayor Watkins. You know, maybe Mayor Watkins is Mayor Walker, right? Because she saw Walker come out of the Gates um, mansion. So he's snooping around. He gets run down. And then that car disappears as well. The car was there. They found it underneath the tarp. And unfortunately, at the end, Mayor Walker is uh, killed. Someone unplugs his uh, the machine that's keeping him alive. And who is that? Who is that? Who did that? The same person that ran him over. You know, I think Mayor Galpin was getting close to to also finding things out, and this person didn't want him to find out. Maybe it is Laurel gates maybe it is her perhaps she controls the beast or maybe she can she turns into the beast who knows i mean you could even think that that uh, principal weems uh what do you call it she uh shapeshifts into the the beast but let's move on to something else too where we see a budding romance between bianca and lucas they kind of look cozy and I actually liked it. I liked looking at that and seeing that, you know, these guys, these two do look like they belong together. They do look like that something might happen, you know. He's joining, he went to join Morning Song. Is that what the name of that? An app or something like that. And I think it's, I believe it's connected to her mom. And then she tells him, don't, don't listen to them. They're just going to pretty much eat you up and spit you out. They don't care about you. They just want your membership. They just want to turn you into something that you're not. So she has a heart. She looks out for her. Lucas, I mean, she even returned this. Uh, what was that? Uh, that a present that uh, Enid gave her. This uh, neck thingy, right? The snood, right? And then Bianca gave it back to. Um, what well, I gave back to Enid, right? Enid, and then Enid gave it to her. But we see also in here that uh, Wednesday. Continues to get herself into trouble. She seems to find herself in situations uh, that leaves you questioning. I mean, Williams was like, how come every time there's some tragic event, some serious event, something, you're always there? And of course, with her wry humor and her wry comeback, she's like, oh, I guess I'm lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and she, you know, and then she suspends her. And then, so not suspense but keeps her, putting us a curfew. You cannot leave or, you know, from Nevermore, from the grounds. And then, of course, Enid and uh, Tyler, they are able to take her to, I mean, you know, they, they actually broke curfew too, especially Enid. Even though it was for uh, what she thought it was going to be, and that was a, uh, you know, a makeup party, but... It wasn't, but she still uh, conspired with Wednesday. And Wednesday was able to convince Weems later on that uh, don't suspend her and don't suspend Tyler and, and what do you call it, and Enid. And please let her continue to investigate. And Principal Weems is like, well, one more slip up, one more, you step out of line one more time and, you know, pretty much it's her ass. She's going to, she's going to be expelled and gone from Nevermore. But what is the outcome? Who is the beast? They keep showing different um, possibilities of who could it be. I mean, remember after about when Eugene got attacked, right? And then you see, you know, Christina Ricci's character pop up, right? And then there's that one time when you saw Tyler, he was you know, underneath the bath, remember? And he was like shaking. Is it him? Is it uh, someone who I think it is? And that's uh, Xavier. Is it Xavier? It could be somebody that's like coming out of left field that no one suspects, you know? That could be the beast. It could be Laurel Gates. 
who knows, right? I mean, we don't see Laurel Gates. What do we see when someone appears in that house along with Enid, Wednesday, and Tyler? And that is, uh, the you know, the Beast, right? The Beast pops up and could that be uh, Laurel Gates? You know, who assumed, assumed that she drowned, uh, you know, 20 years earlier, right? I mean, very, very intriguing. I love the whodunit of this uh episode i mean of this season really of who's the beast you know who is behind these murders you know is wednesday gonna get closer but as closer as she gets is she gonna meet the same fate as you know mayor walker because he was getting close and whoever it was that ran him over and then eventually pulled the plug on him uh who knows if they're gonna try doing that to wednesday but wednesday we all know she's creepy. We know she's someone who welcomes darkness and loves the looming possibility of death. She welcomes it, right? But uh, we know that's not going to happen. She's the main character. And we're going to see others in her circle and others around her meet their fates before she does. Meets their demise. But... Uh, yeah, this episode was really, really good. I, I've enjoyed the entire season so far. You know, two more episodes after this. And, you know, a major loss, a major character. That is uh, Mayor Walker. You know, Rowan before, before that. And almost Eugene. Who's next? I mean, I already know that another character that's going to pass away, but I won't talk about that now. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're on YouTube and you see people's uh, thumbnails and they put the ending of a person right there. Even when I'm looking for like, you know, clips and things just to watch, right? You know, so that I can catch up on the episode I just watched so that I, I keep it fresh in my mind. And then they show something else. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't search that. You know, I didn't search that. Well, why are you, pop, why is that popping up? I guess because when you put Wednesday, it's going to pop up, you know, all these other uh, future episodes that I haven't seen yet. But, uh, yeah, you know, I really enjoyed this episode. This one really was just an amazing, just, I liked how it just, it's getting close, you know. And it's very interesting how they're tying things up and you're seeing Wednesday get closer to the truth. And then you continue to like be teased as to who the beast is. And you're wondering and thinking, is that the beast? Is it this person? Is it, you know? I love that. I love that type of writing. It keeps you guessing. And this episode, you know, really is kind of heightening people's like, especially my, you know, just going, I'm like, okay, who, who, who is the beast? You know, we've seen... You know, because Sino Beach's character in the past episode pop up after the beast attacks. And then after this beast attacks, we see Xavier uh, um, pop up. I don't know. Who could it be? You know? Who could it be? But uh, probably we'll find out uh, at the end of this uh, first season. I got two more episodes left, so we'll see. I have yet to see Uncle Fester. I believe, he's, I believe he is going to be coming up. That's one of the thumbnails I saw. And I believe it's going to be in episode 7. So we'll see how he pops up. Uh, how the person uh, plays the character. Jackie Coogan played the original in the TV series, the 60s TV series. And then uh, Christopher Lloyd played him in the movies. Really funny. I think both of them did a good job. I still, I still enjoy the original. But, uh, you know, Christopher Lloyd did an amazing job. Really funny. And he just had a blast. You can tell he had a blast with that role. So hopefully we'll see, uh, you know, this person who plays the uh, Uncle Fester character. This has fun with it and brings his own uh, spin to it and not try to duplicate what they did before. A little bit of it, but kind of make it your own. Like, about, like I said with Luis Go um, Guzman and uh, his portrayal of uh, Gomez. But uh, anyway, uh, I guess that's all I can talk about. And I guess that's uh, everything I can cover. Everything that came to my mind and everything that popped out and I needed to talk about. Uh, so, well, th there you go. And uh, I'll end it there. So for those of you who stopped by and uh, checked out this video. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And in closing, and as always, take care.